we simply serve a good God. And our God is greatly to be praised. Amen. Amen. Let's give him one more hand clap of praise. May we bow our heads. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come now as humble vessels seeking you. You are a good God. You're an all-sufficient Savior. You're a keeper and you are a redeemer. And right now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our sins. Yes, we ask you to fall fresh in this place. Simply flow from heart to heart and from breast to breast. And we ask, Lord, that you increase so that we might decrease. We desire to hear a word from you. So we simply ask you to speak. Lord Jesus, speak. Hide me behind the old rugged cross so that you get the glory. You get the honor and you get the praise. We thank you, God. And it is in it Jesus' strong and matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. amen, amen, and amen. amen. Matthew, chapter number four, beginning with verse 18. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Verse number 19 for emphasis. Then he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. You may be seated. One thing I have noticed about my children is that when they call me or text me, they want a response right away. But when I call them and text them, their response can be delayed as long as they desire for it to be delayed. Has somebody ever been there? And sometimes, my brothers and my sisters, a response never comes. And I have to call again or text again. But Sister Sharon, when they want something, when they call out to their father, they want the response back in seconds. They want the response 
to be immediately. Isn't this just like us? All right. When God calls, we take our time in responding. All right. If God ever gets a response at all. But when we need him and want him to move on our behalf, we want an immediate response. All right. So for a few moments. On today, I want to talk to you from the subject, an immediate response. John Oakman penned this popular hymn in 1895. And we all know it. It simply says, Jesus knows. All about our struggles. And he will guide till the day is done. Sister Sue said, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. No, not one. No, hymn simply serves as a reminder. And it is encouragement to us that no matter what we go through, no, not, no matter what we deal with, Jesus knows all about us. And he is aware, Deacon Woods, of everything that we endure. No matter how distant we may think he is as we go through. But even in the midst of us going through, he continues to be a man with, which is God with us. As God with us, he comes alongside of us and he guides us lovingly and protectively through the individual and collective processes that we endure. And as he does this right, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, we come to the realization that there's nobody else like Jesus. No, no, not, one. One. no not one. No, not one. As we grasp what Oakman was saying, we understand better and better that Jesus, he simply knows. And my brothers and my sisters, we must grasp the fact that God is sovereign and he is omniscient. When we say that God is sovereign, we mean we know that he is all powerful. And when we say he's omniscient, we know that he is all knowing. Because of this, we can grasp the fact that God knows us holistically. And if you don't know, now you know he knows you inside and out. Like the old folk used to say, he knew you before you were a twink. In your mama's eye. Because he is all powerful and because he is all knowing, nothing that we do or say catches God off guard. God has been aware of every breath we've taken and every move that we made. And he knew it before time as we know it. It is God, my brothers and my sisters, who has anointed us and gifted us with the skills and the talent that we need for his will Amen. to be done. However, in the midst of it all, he knows us. He knows our gifting. Yes. But by the simple fact that we are human, we strive to do what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And we strive to do 
what we feel needs to be done, even in the midst of our call. However, as we find ourselves dealing with our giftedness and our anointing, it is our mandate, Reverend Slater, to know Jesus, to have a heart to hear Jesus, to learn from Jesus, and do what he has called us to do. We are called to be obedient regardless of how we see them. And we have to do it regardless of the cost. See, I don't know if you know this, but I've been in the church since I was five years old. And I've heard it said many times that Jesus is my Savior, but I have yet to make him Lord of my life. My brothers and my sisters, this is not an option. Amen. This is not an option given to us by God, nor is it an option that we find in the pages of Scripture. This is a carnal misconception. And it is man-made. And it does not lead the person to eternal life. All right. But it's the fast track to eternal condemnation. And we've discussed this many times before. But there's an accepted concept that we can choose to accept Christ as our Savior. And later on, when we feel like it, choose to make him Lord and then be obedient to him. This is not the case. All right. And this is a major problem in the church of North America. We have chosen to have churches full of converts. And we have chosen not to be disciples. And I know that the call to discipleship. Mother Wright, it's not an easy call. For the Bible says, if you want to follow Jesus, you must deny yourself. Right. That simply means that it's not about you and it's not about me. We must take up our cross, which lets us know that there's going to be some suffering along the way. But our mandate, no matter how we feel, and no matter what we go through, is that we must follow him. All right. My brothers and my sisters, when Jesus extends the call to discipleship, or even the call to serve, our response, no matter what the cost, no matter what folk may think, no matter what folk may do, should be obediently an immediate response. Our text for today, as we know, and we should know, it's a pen by the Apostle Matthew. He is a former tax collector mm -hmm. in Capernaum. And he's also referred to as Levi yes. in Luke chapter 5, verse 27. He is the author of this text. And it has been confirmed and reaffirmed by the early church fathers and the early church. So we can declare boldly that this text is written by Matthew. His intent here is to give a captivating account of the life of Jesus of Nazareth. And his desire is for those who don't know him to simply get to know him. And we need to understand in our text for today and it's very, very simple when it comes to the observation 
interpretation and application, it simply lets us know that when Jesus calls, it should invoke in us an immediate, an immediate response of obedience. This immediate response of obedience is fueled by our love, reverence, and devotion to him. The key, the key verbs in our text simply give us direction. The key verbs are immediately and follow. Yes. Okay. We are to immediately follow Jesus no matter what the cost to us. We may have to give up a few things, but we have to follow him. All right. We may have to put our jobs on the side, but we have to follow him. We may have to leave our family and our friendships behind, but we are called to follow him. Amen. The songwriter says, I left my friends in kindred, bound for the promised land. Yeah. See, the grace of God was upon me. The Bible in my hand, yeah. in distant land I trod, crying sinners. Come to God because I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. For my Lord. There may be some disconnections along the way, but I want you to understand that the disconnect was for your good and for the good. You may experience pressure from being obedient to him, but the pressure, Sister Regina, is for your good. And for the good. People will not always understand your gifting nor your call. It's not for them to understand. Because guess what? They didn't call you. It's for your good. And for the good. Modern day Pharisees and Sadducees may seek to persecute you. But see the persecution it keeps you humble. All right. It's for your good yeah. and for the good. Agitators yeah. may rise up to try to undermine you in your own ministry. Yeah. But the uprising teaches you to lean and depend on him. It's for your good and for the good. All right. In the text. We understand that Jesus is walking along the Sea of Galilee. Mm -hmm. And as Jesus walks, he sees two brothers. Simon, we call Peter, and his brother Andrew. Yes. They were casting their net into the sea. Yes. And see, they were casting them to catch fish. Yes, fish. I want you to notice this. When Jesus finds the brothers, they're not idle. <laughs> they're working. Mm -hmm. And Jesus calls them and he says, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Let's look at that statement. Follow me. A disciple must be a follower of Jesus, the Christ. To the sharing, it's just that simple. Jesus leads and the disciple follows. He says, I will make you understand this. It is God and God alone of the kill that has the ability to remake and transform. I want you to understand this church. 
Sister Pearson, a person can only be changed by Jesus. This lets us know that when Jesus invites us to be disciples, he is committing himself to mold our hearts and to shape our hearts to be more and more and more like his heart. All right. Isaiah 64 verse 8 says, I am the pot and you are the clay. So he says, follow me. Invitation. I will make you transformation. Fishers of men. The final three words in this verse indicate a response to action. Something that affects what we will live for and what we will be willing to die for. Amen. When we make the decision to follow Jesus, David, we have to understand that the disciple is saved for a purpose. Yes. All right. What's the purpose? We are to join Jesus in his mission. All right. See, somebody got it twisted, right? Mm -hmm. They think the mission is HMBC's mission. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right. Come on, come on. But we are called to join Jesus on his mission. All right. <clears throat> the Bible says in verse number 20, that immediately, somebody say immediately, immediately. they follow Jesus. Jesus keeps on going. He encounters two more brothers, the sons of Zebedee. Yes, yes. These two brothers were working in the family business. Yet again, they were not idle. And Jesus extends the same call to them. And immediately, they left the family business. All right. They left their father. And they join Jesus on his mission. My brothers and my sisters, when Jesus extends the call to follow, the call to be transformed, and when he gives us a divine assignment, our response should be obediently and immediately to leave what we are doing. This does not mean abandoning your families. My God. This doesn't mean for you to run and go quit your job. <laughs> Nor are we to turn our backs on our responsibilities. Yeah. All right. But what it simply means, Joe, is that we must put God first. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's what it means. Oh, yeah. That's what it means. We have to follow him and do what he said we should do. Amen. Because we understand, church, it is for our good, good. and for his. the good. What steps should be taken if we sincerely desire? To be discipled by Jesus and join him on his mission. Remember, Slade, I see three things in this text. I see invitation. 
transformation. I see culmination. Okay. Right says you're right there. <laughs> <laughs> Invitation. You got that mother? <laughs> Invitation. Transformation. Culmination. Before I start to look at the point, see, the invitation needs to be accepted. Yes. All right. Oh my God. It's an offer. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> All right. All right. Jesus is offering transformation. Mm -hmm. But see, my brothers and my sisters, the transformation has to be embraced. Because we understand change ain't always easy. But see, the acceptance of the invitation and embracing the transformation leads to the culmination. Which, if, which immediately, which we om be om immediately and obediently join Jesus on his mission. All right. So number one, there must be an acceptance of the invitation. When Jesus extends the invitation to join his mission, we must simply agree to follow him and become his students no matter what it costs us. Right. It could cost us everything, but our answer should be yes. Yeah. Yeah. Number two, in order for transformation to occur, access must be granted. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus must be given access to our hearts so that the transformation can take place. All right. We must allow, Sister Roberta, Jesus to be the potter. Yes. And we humbly consent to be the clay. Yes. We must allow Jesus, thinking of Smith, to pick us up. Yes. We must allow him to turn us around. We must allow him to clean and bandage our wounds. We must allow him to put our lives back together again. Amen. Once we do that, he can mold us and shape us into vessels to be used individually and collectively for his Redemptive purpose. Yes, redemptive. Tell yourself, transformation makes me better. Yes, yes, makes me better. better. And last but not least, the result of accepting Jesus' invitation and embracing transformation is a culmination. We become fishers amen, amen. of men. All right. The songwriter says, in loving kindness, mm -hmm. Jesus came. Mm -hmm. My soul, by his mercy, to reclaim. And from the depths of sin and shame, through his grace, he lifted me. See, when Jesus called us to follow him, we must give him the response that he wants. When there is doubt and we find ourselves in the midst of shame, give him the response that he wants. When troublesome folks try to tear us down, give him the response that he wants, when he wants to mold us and remake us, give him the response that he wants. The song writer says, it tells the one whose loving heart 
can feel my deepest woe. Who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. My brothers and my sisters, the love of Jesus, it gives us life. The love of Jesus invigorates our hearts. The love of Jesus revitalizes, it encourages, and it builds up. The love of Jesus changes us in the midst of trouble and in the midst of our struggle. The love of Jesus can heal our deepest pains. It reassembles a shattered spirit. It elevates where sin humiliates. It offers comfort in times of despair. By and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story of how we have overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Right. See, when we reflect on the issues of life, we will understand it better by and by. by, and by. Disappointment yes. and disconnectedness, we will understand it better yes. by and by. Right. Devastation and loneliness, we will understand it better when we are misunderstood. We'll understand it better when we're lied on, when we are talked about, when folks leave us for dead, when we are scandalized, when the pace of ministry seems slow. We'll understand it better. See, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven Filled my soul. Yeah. He bathed yeah. my heart in love. Yeah. And he wrote yeah. my name above in just oh, no a little talk with Jesus. Yeah. Makes me whole. Yeah. My brothers and my sisters, oh. sometimes we are misunderstood. Yeah. We simply need to have a little talk yeah. with Jesus. Yeah. We get frustrated. And stagnated, we simply need to have a little talk with Jesus. Sometimes we are devastated because we are isolated. We simply need to have a little talk with Jesus. We need shelter in the midst of the storm. We simply need to have a little talk with Jesus. When we are broken and need to be healed. When we are in troubled waters and we need a bridge. When we are hurt and when we are worried. We simply need to have a little talk with Jesus. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Simply take it to the Lord in prayer. My joy, my peace, I'm taking it to the Lord. My mental stability, I'm taking it to the Lord. Aggravation, frustration, hurt, and despair, I'm taking it to the Lord. Lord, protect my family. I'm taking it to the Lord, creating me a clean heart. I'm taking it to the Lord, renew a right spirit. I'm taking it to the Lord, my brothers, my sisters. Take it to the altar and leave it there. Ministry, I'm taking it to the altar. I'm leaving it there. Relationships, I'm taking it to the altar. I'm leaving it there. My friends, my foes, I'm taking them to the altar. I'm leaving them there. My burdens. 
questions, my questions, my doubt, my insecurities, my addiction, my health, my sorrow. I'm taking it. I'm taking it to Jesus. I'm leaving it there. The songwriter said, Jesus knows all about our struggles. He forgot till the day is done. Somebody tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say, they're not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not So what are the saints? Hallelujah. The should be taken. If we desire to be discipled by Jesus and join him on his mission. There's invitation. All right. Transformation. You combine the two, you get the culmination. The doors of the church are open.